Look at that capsule. Clean. Pristine. Like it just got waxed at a car spa. Some people are calling Blue Origin New Shepard's latest mission. NS-31. Fake. Because, and I quote, it didn't even get toasty on the way down. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Crew Dragon lands looking like it survived atmospheric hell. And the difference? Oh, it's a whole roasted marshmallow versus microwaved popcorn situation. So, why does Blue Origin New Shepard not scorch after landing? Find the answer in today's Tech Map episode. So here's the scoop. Blue Origin's NS-31 comes back, looking like it just left a showroom. Not a scratch, not a burn mark, not even a don't touch hot surface warning. It's a contrast to the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule, which looked like a toasted marshmallow, and the Boeing Starliner, which also looked scorched by heat after re-entry. And people are suspicious. I mean, if it really went to space, shouldn't it at least smell a little smoky? But before you grab your tinfoil hat, hold up. The truth is way less scandalous and way more scientific. Blue Origin's flight? It's what scientists call a suborbital mission. What I call a very expensive vertical roller coaster. It goes up about 66.5 miles, 106.9 kilometers, just enough to say, we, I'm weightless. And then it falls back down like your motivation on a Monday. Suborbital flights like this have a lower re-entry speed, closer to 1 km per second, or 2,237 miles per hour, compared to orbital flights. The aerodynamic heating during re-entry is thus much less intense. Anyway, at least it is above the Karman line, 62 miles 100 km, the internationally accepted boundary of space. This is enough to push Jeff Bezos' ego even higher because BO's main rival, Virgin Galactic, fails to do that. SpaceX, though? That thing's in full orbit. Crew Dragon typically flies at altitudes of 250 to 260 miles, 400 to 420 kilometers, for low Earth orbit, such as missions to the International Space Station. Of course, with that high altitude, when it comes back, its speed will reach 17,000 miles per hour. 27,359 kilometers per hour, or roughly Mach 22, so much faster than New Shepard. This speed is required to maintain orbit and is a result of the spacecraft's orbital velocity, around 7.8 kilometers per second, or 17,448 miles per hour, basically running laps around Earth like it forgot leg day. And when it re-enters, it fights the atmosphere, like I challenge thee to a duel. The price to pay for such courage is quite high. Scorched, blackened, barbecued heat shield. As a result, the vehicle will need more rest days to be totally recovered. 10 out of 10 drama. Would watch again. Based on those comparisons, we can partly answer the question. Why doesn't New Shepard burn? Well, that's simply because it's not going fast and far enough to heat up. Its flights are not fake. It's just chill which is enough that passengers inside feel like they're on rides at Disney World. Like the guy who shows up to the gym, stretches for five minutes, and leaves. Technically there, but didn't break a sweat. The capsule slows down with parachutes. It's basically doing a controlled fall while looking fabulous. No heat shield needed, no drama, just vibes. That explains why people consider New Shepard flights to be just a fun ride. But Gail King, Part of an all-female Blue Origin spaceflight crew with Katy Perry and Lauren Sanchez. Got a little spicy online. And she clapped back. Please don't call it a ride. That is not a friggin' ride. Whenever a man goes up, you have never said to an astronaut, boy, what a ride. You know, we duplicated the same trajectory that Alan Shepard did back in the day, pretty much. No one called that a ride. Okay, let's quick reminder. Alan Shepard, first American in space. Also, walked on the moon. Also trained for years and could actually fly the rocket. Meanwhile, Gail sat in a chair and took a very expensive detour to the upper atmosphere. The only training she received in pre-flight was how to buckle and unbuckle seatbelts. Her four-minute mission in space was shorter than most rides at Disney World. More importantly, the New Shepard mission just carries passengers. No cargo, no labs, no experiments. 
just rich folks with a bucket list. The only science happening is your brain going woo when you feel weightless for a few minutes. So at this point, many people wonder how New Shepard contributes to the development of human space exploration. To be honest, while orbital missions contribute more directly to long-duration spaceflight, research, and space infrastructure development, suborbital missions are beneficial in some cases. It enables fast, repeated access to microgravity for short experiments. Each suborbital flight provides about four minutes of high-quality microgravity, ideal for experiments in physics, biology, technology demonstrations, and educational projects. Take, for example, the NS-29 mission demonstrated artificial gravity by spinning the capsule to simulate lunar gravity. The capsule was spun at 11 revolutions per minute, producing one-sixth of Earth's gravity. In simulated lunar gravity, customers can accelerate their learning and technology readiness for lunar payloads at much lower cost. The system supports a wide range of payloads, from student projects to advanced NASA technology. NASA's Flight Opportunities Program also regularly flies multiple payloads on New Shepard, including precision landing sensors, advanced navigation systems, and lunar gravity simulators. Blue Origin designed New Shepard as a fully reusable vehicle, which allows for rapid turnaround between missions, making it possible to fly payloads often and at a lower cost compared to orbital vehicles. Researchers can rapidly iterate and refine experiments, as New Shepard's short mission duration and fast reusability enable frequent access to space-like conditions without the long wait times of orbital missions. This is essential for maturing innovations before deploying them on higher risk, more expensive orbital or deep space missions. Additionally, Jeff Bezos recognizes his suborbital vehicle as a testbed for the development of reusable architecture for future rockets like New Glenn. Lessons learned from New Shepard's design, build, test, and repeated operations, especially in autonomy, guidance, vertical landing, throttleable liquid engines, and lean operations, are being applied to New Glenn's much larger and more complex reusable first stage. This includes the ability to land and reuse rocket boosters, a central feature of New Glenn's design. Mastery of vertical landing with New Shepard is foundational for New Glenn which will also attempt to recover its much larger first-stage booster by landing it on a drone ship in the ocean, a more challenging but similar principle. The operational philosophy and safety culture developed through New Shepard's human spaceflight missions help inform New Glenn's design for crew safety, redundancy, and cost-effective operations. In addition, New Shepard's frequent successful landings and refurbishments have allowed Blue Origin to refine its approach to reusability, logistics, and rapid turnaround, all of which are essential for New Glenn's goal of flying its first stage up to 25 times. Last but not least, the BE-3 engine, proven on New Shepard, forms the basis for the BE-3U upper stage engine on New Glenn, while the reusable BE-4 engines powering New Glenn's first stage benefit from Blue Origin's accumulated experience with reusable propulsion systems. While Crew Dragon missions aim at professional astronauts and an inspiration for civilians for multi-day orbital trips, New Shepard opens space access to non-astronauts, including artists, educators, and celebrities. So, to some extent, it inspires public interest in space. In conclusion, New Shepard is not really less valuable. It's more foundational instead. New Shepard is like the training ground and proof of concept for more ambitious projects like New Glenn, Orbital, and Blue Moon, Lunar Lander. Crew Dragon is already a key player in ongoing orbital exploration, so its current impact is higher. But if Blue Origin scales up successfully, New Shepard will be seen as a crucial stepping stone, like Mercury before Apollo. So what do you think New Shepard's role will be in the evolution of space exploration? Don't hesitate to leave your thoughts in the comments. New Shepard is a rocket manufactured by Blue Origin for space tourism. The rocket is designed to take passengers into suborbital space inside a crew capsule. The capsule features six large observation windows, one per seat. New Shepard is fully reusable, and as of April 2025, 
it has made 31st missions to space. In November 2015, it was the first reusable rocket to successfully make a soft landing on the ground, beating out the more famous SpaceX Falcon 9 booster by several weeks. Blue Origin was founded by entrepreneur Jeff Bezos, who made his fortune with Amazon. Bezos also purchased the Washington Post in 2013. Forbes magazine has ranked him as the richest person in the world for several years running. As of now, the publication estimates his net worth at $215 billion. The vehicle's height is 60 feet, 18 meters, with a volume of 530 cubic feet, 15 cubic meters. Blue Origin's New Shepard's first crewed launch was NS-16, which took place on July 20, 2021, to mark the 52nd anniversary of humans landing on the moon. The mission carried Jeff Bezos, his brother Mark Bezos, Wally Funk, and Oliver Damon into space. The flight was a suborbital space flight that lasted approximately 10 minutes and crossed the Karman line. For a typical flight, New Shepard launches vertically and soars for about two and a half minutes before the main engine cuts off and the capsule separates from the rocket. Passengers are weightless for about four minutes during the 11-minute flight and are high enough at an altitude of 307,000 feet or 93,573 meters to see the curvature of Earth. The spacecraft coasted for a few minutes in space before re-entering the atmosphere and using an autonomous, rocket-powered vertical landing system to touch down. New Shepard is named after NASA Mercury program astronaut Alan Shepard, who was the first American to fly in space in 1961 on what was also a suborbital flight. Passengers aboard the Blue Origin spacecraft, however, will enjoy more than 10 times the space in the capsule than Shepard did in his Freedom 7 spacecraft, according to the company. Up to six people can fly into space at once. The interior volume is said to be large enough for everyone to float and move around. The large windows will provide a view of Earth. In addition to passengers, the spacecraft aboard New Shepard can carry standardized experiments of up to 50 pounds, 23 kilograms, with larger options available for custom requests. Prior to flying in space, Blue Origin launched several prototype test vehicles. The first test flight took place in November 2006, and the first vertical landing, which took place after a short flight, happened early in 2011. A second test vehicle in August 2011 crashed due to flight instabilities, according to Blue Origin. 